Welcome to the Spa Girls podcast. Each week we bring you the best self-publishing tips, tools and resources for authors. I'm Shah Barrett. I'm Cheryl Phipps. I'm Trudy J. Welcome to the Welcome. Spa, everyone. Hello. And this week we have an amazing guest. We've got Sadie King. Say hello, hey, Sadie. Sadie. Hi, Sadie. Hello. hello. Now, the awesome... Four New Zealand accents this morning, just saying. <laughs> yes. Well, that's yes. usual. Which the awesome true. thing about Sadie is she's doing really well in Insta Love um, short fiction, and she's also a New Zealander. Yes, <laughs> even better. <laughs> it's bonus points. <laughs> so, so all our listeners are going to have to look up... Look, um, put up with is what i was going to say for kiwi accents including guests this week which is fine you can all pretty much used to it surely by now um i'm going to read out sadie's bio and then we will get right into the interview how about that as an idea sounds good okay sadie king is the usa today best-selling author of short and steamy insta love stories about strong protective men and the curvy women who steal their hearts her books are high heat oh so sweet and always with a happily ever after she lives in new zealand with her ex-military husband and raucous young son when she's not writing she loves catching waves with her son running along the beach and good wine preferably drunk with a book in hand nice that sounds awesome <laughs> do you run like running on the beach as in you go for a run like i go for a run yeah oh, isn't I, that I'm really hard running on the... that drunk <laughs> <laughs> with a drink in hand yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is tough. lovely it's tough lovely feet running. and legs a very good workout though like yeah. on the sand yeah. by all accounts yeah. not that i would know because i've never run on the beach apart from chasing after small children back in the day but <laughs> I feel, I feel like that makes it you're making it unnecessarily hard like on the beach <laughs> makes it... yeah, otherwise it's concrete you know so yeah. it's better for your, your joints and it's lovely the, the waves are crashing the seagulls it's yeah Awesome. Nice. It sounds beautiful. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, well, let's get actually started on the actual interview <laughs> that we're all here for. Um, so, Sadie, let's. Um, can you just start at the beginning and tell us how you got into writing in general and in particular self-publishing and give us a bit of a background on where you've come from? Yeah. Um, so before I wrote romance, I actually wrote um, children's books. Um, and it's been something that I'd always wanted to do, like... Um, you know, I'd always loved writing, but it never really, you know, seemed like, a, you know, a career option for me. Like, I, you know, I didn't know anyone who was a writer. It wasn't something that that you do, really. So I went and did other things and then, you know, was always writing something and got to my kind of 30s. And I was like, oh, you know, I really want to write a children's book. I should do something about that. Um, so I started kind of looking into that and did some courses and wrote a few things and like won a couple of competitions. I was like, well, you know, kind of got a bit of a role. And, um, you know, I was sending manuscripts out to publishers and agents and not having any luck. So I started looking into self-publishing. And it was when I was looking into self-publishing, I kept coming across these romance authors who were just, you know, really doing so well. And I said to my husband, I was like, oh, if I could write romance, you know, I could really make a killing in this. And um, I was like, oh, but, you know, I can't write romance. And I was like, I don't, you know, I don't even read romance. Like, I was, but then I was like, do I? Hang on a minute, do I? Because it was all kind of American, um, what, you know, the the stories I was hearing. And we were living in the UK at the time. And um, I was like, well, actually, I do read romance. It's called, you know, it's called like women's literature and it's, mm. You know, it's got nice flowers on the cover. It's, you know, it's a little bit different. So I started reading kind of more American-based um, romance with the, the male torso and, and all of that. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I you know, I do read these stories. These are good. Maybe it's something I could do. Um, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to give it a go. And um, so I wrote my first romance, and it took me months because I was, at that time, I had, like, a young baby, and I was commuting into London I had a two-hour train ride every morning and a two-hour train ride oh. every day every day back um which was good writing time when I could get a seat um so I wrote this 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 romance and um then I was learning about the marketing I was like oh, okay I kind of need at least three of them before I put anything out and I was like that's going to take me forever and I stumbled across short romance and I was I now how I did that because I was looking into categories and and looking at um you know what might be 
um, you know, quite kind of marketable categories. And I stumbled across the short reads because we don't have that in the, you know, the UK, Amazon doesn't have that. Australia, Amazon doesn't have that. So it's an it's American thing. But I found these like short romance books. I was like, huh, what are these? And I read a few and I, I was just hooked. Like, um, the, I mean, the authors at the time, it was a, Olivia T. Turner and Jessica Kane, and they're just these like over the top <laughs> stories, these like little kind of snippets of happiness, really. And I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to do that um and and also I thought that's a good way to test whether I do enjoy this whether this is a genre I enjoy writing whether I um there's a market for it if there's readers for my books if you know they're enjoying it I thought it's you know it felt a little bit easier to get a few short story stories together than to to you know carry on with these longer novels so I wrote a um a six book series and then I wrote an additional um book to use as a reader magnet to start collecting emails and I published those in October 2019 just one after the other every week um and people bought them people read them I got people signing up for my newsletter um and I really enjoyed the whole process I was like hey I'm gonna do this mm -hmm. um and then, of course, what happened in, you know, early 2020 was uh, <laughs> yeah. that year. It was a plot twist. <laughs> yeah, plot twist. Um, I was stuck in the house for like three months. <laughs> um, so I just kept writing and I kept learning, um, you know, and I kept doing, I, I was able to keep up this kind of weekly release schedule just, wow. um, you know, quite easily. So, yeah, that's. Yeah, that's how I got into it, really. So how how long are your books then? If we... So when I first started, they were super short because I was purposely aiming for the 60-minute reads category. Mm -hmm. So they were between sort of um, 7 um, to 9K. Yeah. Um, so if you don't know, there's these three categories in the short reads that are, that are very popular with um, short romance readers is that the one hour then 90 minutes, and then two hours. And Amazon goes on page length rather than word count. So it does vary by by author. But for me, because my, my books are quite dialogue heavy, um, they, um, it, you know, it's usually between sort of under 9K, that would be 60 minutes. Um, other authors, you know, it might be a little bit different than that. It depends how you format it as well. Um, so, yeah, so, so at the start, they were very short. Um, because I was hit, I wanted to hit that that one hour category. Now they're 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 a bit longer. They're usually now um, I'm writing between about sixteen to twenty, mm -hmm. um, twenty thousand words. Yeah. And, and is it very different between into? those three categories? Like, is there a, you know, are you a sixty minute reader and you'd never read the two hour ones, or are they? No, I think the the readers will read. Um, you know, if they if they have, like find an author they like that writes in those categories, they'll read them. There are there are um forty five minutes and there's thirty minutes. There's even fifteen minutes. Wow. <laughs> um, I've never written in those. Yeah. Um, so with your um, longer word count, is that two hour reads or like the yeah. minutes, two hours? Yeah, I'm mostly in the two hour reads now. I do have a few books um that are that are kind of in the middle, sort yeah. of you know, 12, 14,000 words and they'll, they're in the 90 minute reads. Yeah. But mostly I'm sitting in the two hour read category. Right. Okay. Yeah. And that doesn't matter that they're in the different categories there. It's just, well, people will find them. <laughs> or... um, it does in terms of visibility. So mm -hmm. the 60 minute category is a bit less competitive. So that's why I chose to start there. So if you look at, if you're looking at, if you're looking for ranking, um, it's easier to rank higher in the 60 minute category um, because yeah, it's just a bit less competitive. Mm -hmm. um, and then 90 minute category gets more competitive and then competitive and then two hour is um, more competitive. So um, yeah, when I was first starting out, visibility was important to me and at different times it has been, but now that's not so important. So um, yeah, I quite, I quite enjoy writing longer and also you get the um, longer page reads. So I'm in KU. So it does make a considerable difference um, 
to me really um to have those longer books and to be getting those page reads yeah. Um, but yeah it depends you know what you're trying to achieve as a writer um you know if you are just starting out it is quite hard to compete in that two-hour category of visibility yeah. is important to you yeah yeah <laughs> um, makes sense. total yeah. sense yeah um, just a quick question how many books in total do you have now here in 2023 um so I've got over 100 um, wow. wow yeah I couldn't <laughs> tell you the number <laughs> <laughs> once you get over 100 you kind of stop counting um it's probably something like 120 okay. something like that yeah. I'm not I'm wow. not yeah around that awesome. um yeah and and I have some box sets as well yeah and that's it's cool. super impressive so we're coming up four year published bursary so it is yeah. incredible <laughs> congratulations to you that's a lot of hard work in there oh, thank you yeah <laughs> and what and what would you say it would, would um, be quite hard getting covers as well because if you're that prolific you're always on the lookout for them aren't you <laughs> yeah yeah that's right so when I first started out I actually I just I had a cover designer um that I found on Fiverr Mm -hmm. um so he would do them for like um 10 bucks it was like 10 bucks a cover um um because yeah because I was publishing weekly and I didn't want a lot of yeah. um and they were great for a long time they were great covers and a lot of authors starting out um will do their own covers and short romance and you you know you can get a, a kind of get away with that I think when you're starting out um but I am quite that's design is just not my thing like mm -hmm. there was no way I was going to make my own covers like I just you know it just would have looked <laughs> terrible so um yeah so I went on Fiverr and I've but I've recently um now I have a different cover designer who who you know is I've kind of leveled up a little bit yeah 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 that's cool I think leveling up has made a difference to your sales um I think so yeah mm -hmm. Um, I have recently just really um, kind of actually just doubled my income to what it was, you know, just a few months back. And, you know, I'm putting that down to like, I just think a lot of things falling into place. There's a lot of stuff I've been doing in the background that's kind of finally kind of settling in. Mm -hmm. And I do think, yeah, leveling up covers is probably, you know, it's just one of those things that I've been mm -hmm. working on that kind of, you know, is added together. Like added just to it. Yeah. Yeah, I want to come to back to that. I want to put a put a pin on that <laughs> <laughs> leveling up. But maybe we could do that at, towards the end because I know Trudy's got a whole raft of <laughs> things she wants to go through. I just I just wanted to sort of get some basics around you know exactly what you're writing. And so is there a so with Insta Love um, is can it be any genre? And what and what is your genre in particular? Like, are you do you always write in one kind of area, or can you sort of is it a a wider band um so I mean with in, insta love there's I mean there's as many genres as there are in any romance you know if you want to write um paranormal or shifter or alien or um sweet or Christian or you know there's 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 all of that there there's the readers for all of that um I write um my genre is contemporary steamy and and I say insta love but some it's not it's not actually always insta love sometimes I'll do a second chance. Um, you know, there's certain tropes that lend themselves well to to short romance. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, Ince Love is one of them because you don't have to, you know, you, you kind of got to get to the guts of it pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you know, they see each other and they're instantly in love, like, cool, yeah. just, you know, that saved yourself 20,000 words just there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <And> all the eggs. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I tend to write... Um, I mean, and the, the the beauty with short romance and being quite prolific is you 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 can experiment, you know. And I have yeah. really enjoyed that. Like my first series was billionaire age gap, you know. That's that's really all they were. Um, and I've written about you know firemen and um, mountain men and security guys and um, small towns, and I've done dark and you know like. Nice. I, you know, it's been lovely to mm. just try all these things. Mm -hmm. And I tried doing um, actually things that were less steamy as well, like just to, to see what happened. Mm -hmm. My readers didn't buy those books. 
So, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, that was a good lesson. But, um, yeah, I, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time, like, trying to, because you can so quickly, you know, like, like you 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 do something and and find it doesn't work you can just cut that series really quickly like mm-hmm. I've done that um where I've you know I've planned a six book series and then it, I'll see oh this isn't really mm-hmm. going well I'll just keep it to four books you know yeah um you can pivot really quickly if you see that um you know like you know cowboys is everyone's into cowboys you can go huh well I'm gonna do cowboys next yeah. Or what happened to me recently um like I think for me like I really enjoy actually writing um mountain men and ex-military I've kind of I've done all this experimentation and Mm -hmm. and I've discovered (laughs) sort of you know this year that's that's what I like that's what I really enjoy writing and that's what my readers really enjoy Mm -hmm. from me Mm -hmm. um and you know so a lot of people will say this advice like find your lane and stick to it it's taken me a lot of time to find my lane but I I don't regret any of that because I've had a lot of fun yeah (laughs) That's it. It's that's perfect, doesn't it? Really, I love that. Yeah, yeah. And until you try, you don't know, and you don't want to be sitting there still writing the same thing five years down the track, wishing that you had have tried X, Y, Z. You know, yeah, some genre or genre. Mm. Yeah. Are there any other ones that really didn't work for your readers? Like, and yeah, like yeah, dark romance didn't work for me. Um. Oh, you know, I was quite intrigued with dark romance and, and you know, I was like, because a lot of short romance, it can be quite sweet and fluffy. I mean, I mean sweet, still steamy, but, you know, it's all, it's all quite light and fluffy yeah. um, because a lot of readers, you know, they just want a little pick me up or something. Yeah. Um, but I was finding that I was getting a bit bored with that. And so I experimented sort of last year with a bit of dark romance um, but I also realized that's not for me. I was like, oh, no, I'm not sure I like that. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. I enjoy going you know that that dark um obviously a lot of authors are doing so well with that you know um but I realized that's what f- not, wasn't for me and and I think I f- that led me to what what I have found for me is more I think emotional romance mm-hmm. kind of call it where as I like um I like there to be a bit of depth and I think that's why I like the military ex-military characters as well because there's so much scope there to have these you know these I mean these guys I mean they're they're, you know, they're real like alpha, you know, they've been in the military, they're, you know, protector hero type people. But, you know, there's there's room for them to have some scars internally, you know, externally, um, you know, to be a bit damaged or a bit lost, um, you know, or even, um, you know, that, you know, like maybe coming from their um, early years they've gotten into the military because they didn't have a great start in life and the military gave them focus and all of this and they've had this great military career but then they come back to you know the mountain and and fall in love and when they see something you know happen to the woman you know it kind of snaps something inside them that's Mm -hmm. you know brings them back to hell you know, maybe the, their early years. I, I don't know. If I'm yeah, no, that, no, that wow. totally makes sense. Well, I think yeah. by adding the extra, that's probably doubled your workout, really, hasn't it? And that's why you're writing longer now because you are having that yes. more of an emotional bond. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. A bit of point, history, yeah. a bit of backstory. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm. So yeah, there's um a bit a bit more depth there now. Mm. I'm yeah. I'm enjoying that, and I think my readers are. Um, so yeah. is it just one point of view, or do you have alternating point of views, or? Um, I do um, first person dual point of view mm. yeah and I used to be you know quite strict oh it's got to alternate but now I think oh if it needs to you know the next scene needs to be from her again that's okay we'll, we'll do that yeah. Yeah. So is that's that a thing, thing in short romance is it always first person as somebody like I really struggle writing first person I don't know it just feels too close <laughs> somehow which is why probably it works in short romance duh, yeah. Sharon. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly that it's yeah. um it's the most common in yeah. short romance um I, I have seen it done in third person um but it is the most common I think it exactly that it brings that immediacy yeah um, yeah to it you're yeah. not having to guess what the character like guess or or kind of interpret through the third person yeah that makes yeah. total sense yeah. yeah so let's talk a little bit about um so it's really intriguing listening to you talk about the, what you've tested and how it's all working I, I what I'm also intrigued about is how um 
like it is short fiction and you don't have as many words so how do you like are there scenes that happen in, in a longer romance that you just can't fit in a in a shorter romance or are there are there scenes that you have to make sure you include as part of that kind of satisfying journey um yeah. what yeah give me give me all of that <laughs> um, it's kind of like a longer romance but condensed yeah so you still um I mean like we talked about the the meeting usually you get straight to the point so there's not normally you too much of a setup it kind of goes straight into the the meet cute um or if it's second chance you know re-meeting whatever um and then you've got to just kind of get straight into them you know throwing together it's always good if they can be thrown together um still and um you know you get what short romances what I find my readers particularly well I think most short romances they do like steaminess mm. so you kind of need to get to some steam pretty quick um not always um but yeah yeah they tend to like the steam short romance <laughs> romance. so yeah if you can get to the steam pretty quick which doesn't need to be you know all the way <laughs> but you know something something going on there that's steamy um you kind of need to get to that um and then there does need to be conflict I I believe um it just sometimes it doesn't need to be that much of a conflict you know mm -hmm. a little misunderstanding that's easily resolved sometimes that's all the story needs mm -hmm. um and then and then you need your happy ending and you need and it's quite common to have an epilogue, you know, mm -hmm. a few years into the future, mm -hmm. this is what they're doing and here's all nice. their bags, you know, that okay. kind of. Ask, <laughs> make sure that they're all still happy. Many, how many sex scenes you would have in, in your books? Um, so I vary between sort of one to three. Mm -hmm. um, when they were super short, it was usually just one, okay. um, but, but maybe, yeah, something else. But that's something... Um, if I can talk about the steam for a minute. Yeah. I mean, I think there are authors out there who do do short romance um, without it, um, and that's fine. But I, um, when I tried it, because I was a little uncomfortable writing the steamy scenes at first, like they're not my favourite to write. Mm. Um, and, you know, particularly I think, I, know, I don't know if it's a cultural thing, like, you know, I'm writing for the American market and everything's, you know, yeah. They're, they're, I love Americans. They're so like you know. Let's put a male torso on the cover and this <laughs> romance. This is what. Yeah. But you know, I was brought up a bit more conservative, and I've been living in the UK for a long time, so I kind of found that a bit a bit hard. And you know, and I was like, oh, I'm a bit uncomfortable about this. So I might like, you know, pull it back. See what happens if I don't do a lot of steam. Books didn't sell. Okay, cool. So then I was like, well, what if I challenge myself? What if I go the other way? And what if I? embrace the steam and embrace the sex and really kind of do this push myself out of my comfort zone so I um I started I, I read all the books I could find about writing sex scenes I um you know went to the authors that I enjoy who do really good sex scenes and I I try to break it down like what are they doing here and I really challenge myself mm. um and you know, I think I do my sex scenes a lot better now. I I don't think they're the, I still don't think they're the best. I don't think people come to my books for the sex scenes, whereas I think mm -hmm. other other short romance writers, they perhaps do. Like, I don't think that will ever be me, but but I think at least I give them a hmm. satisfying experience. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love that. I love that. Yeah. 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 yeah, same. I think that's awesome. I like that. Yeah. Going, especially going to other authors' sex scenes. Like there's certain yeah. authors that I can think of straight away that I'm like, right, I know they do a good sex scene. Yeah. And it's not yeah. always because they know where bits go, but it's the emotional and the yes. and the story is continued yeah. as part Absolutely. of the sex scene. Yeah. Like that's yeah. Yeah. And it's the rhythm of it that's kind of throughout the whole story. You know, you yeah. need to build that anticipation. Yeah. And particularly I think in short, because it, a lot of the time, like, you know, your reader will read this in one sitting. Mm. So kind of that that journey through the book is quite important. So, mm. you know, you do need a bit of um, titillation at the start, you know, yeah, so, exactly. you, know, you know, it can build up and, then, and, and, you know, they might do things to each other. That, yeah. and, then, and then the end kind of, you know, climax is the full. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know it. Yeah. <laughs> you made it through. Oh, that right. climax, they're just there, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> 
so and that's an interesting point too like because they are reading often in one sitting mm. is there a flow that you have like does it go up and you know like in a book you know you sort of have periods where it's sort of down mm -hmm. and not as exciting and then you have the exciting moments is that the same or are you just is it constantly at a higher level do you think or um it's a little bit the same it's just like I say a bit more condensed yeah mm -hmm. so you wouldn't spend a long time kind of you know describing you know a slow walk that they went on or something you know if they you know if they're having like a, a date somewhere um you know you might have a bit of dialogue to show maybe the, the banter or, or something that needs to be shown but then you might just skip like oh I held his hand the whole under the table the whole time I mean mm -hmm. you wouldn't like that but you know yeah. you kind of there there is sometimes you just need to tell yeah. a little bit a little bit just to just to yeah. just to jump on like you don't want to spend you don't have the luxury to spend too much time so, so how many words do you have in a chapter and how many chapters per book I suppose I could do the maths on that but... <laughs> <laughs> um, so I tend to at the moment somewhere between I don't know 12 to 16 chapters yeah right um yeah. like I don't I don't you know I don't try and keep it the same every book really no. um and so the chapters will vary between I aim for about 1500 words right. sometimes they are a lot more depend if I'm dictating they can be like you know I'm like oh that's a 3000 word chapter <laughs> <laughs> how did that happen <laughs> you know um so I don't kind of I don't try and structure myself that way mm -hmm. right okay so when you start out writing, do you have kind of like, do you work on like romance in the beat outline, like, or or is it just the story? How do you, do you, or are you just like, sit down and let's see where this goes? Um, so I do, I do plan, I do mm -hmm. plan my books. Um, and I kind of scaled down the, um, you know, the romance in the beat. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, you know, kind of took her beats and just kind of, scaled them down for yeah. short romance yeah um and when I first started out I would kind of plot out my stories a lot more so I'd go through what are the beats and you know what's this character and um you know for I, I write in Scrivener so I'd have like the notes up and I'd be you know writing things and, and then making sure like oh right does each scene have the you know what are their think mm -hmm. their motivations you know I do all that yeah and I found because I'm doing it so often now I actually don't need to do as much yeah. prep because it's kind of it's kind of all the end mm -hmm. comes out instinctually you know it makes total um, sense you're you're an experienced craft person like as in you've over 100 books you've got that you know it's part of your muscle memory now I guess yeah yeah yes yeah I, I think so I still do write um you know, a, a, a sentence or two for each, mm -hmm. for each scene. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's just, they make love, you know, that would yeah. be it. Yeah. Um, and, and if I'm dictating though, I'll tend to write out a little bit yeah. more, think it through a bit more. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how much of it do you dictate? Like, tell us about that. So I just started dictating this year actually. And um, I, I got right into it and I was dictating all my books. And um, then I was, realizing that actually I wasn't enjoying the editing process very much because I, it tends my dictation tends to be quite sloppy <laughs> um and I was finding it hard to be concise like I, it's a real mind shift mm. I, f I find dictation um and so I've pulled it back and now what I've found works is I as I hand type the first couple of chapters and, be, and then I've usually got the characters solidified and the settings and then um I'll just see how I feel then for the next session and and usually towards the end of the week I will dictate because I'll have like you know just want to get it finished and I'll be like right I just need a, a good session to get this done in the time yeah. frame I want to yeah. um so that's kind of where I've got to but yeah I've found with dictation like I even started going back and doing um writing exercises but mm -hmm. dictating them mm -hmm. because I was finding it yeah, very hard to think in that way. Think. Interesting. Yeah. Wow, that's very cool. So, and can you tell me about your process? Like, so and you you're publishing one a week still, and how far are you, are you writing it and then publishing? Who do you have someone editing that kind of stuff? Can you just take yeah. us through that? 
Um, so at the moment, I'm publishing fortnightly. I've moved to a fortnightly schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when I was publishing once, um, when I was publishing once a week, I was writing my book. So what what I would do is um, like Monday would be planning, write the first couple of chapters. Tuesday, write four chapters. Um, Wednesday, finish it off. Edit it Thursday. Do a final edit. So I always do two rounds of edits. So the first edit is, um, you know, filling in plot points and research and tidying up. And then I do a third edit where I um, read it out loud. And I like to do that all, all in one sitting to see how it makes all the flows there. And I read it out loud to myself. And that's that used to be able to be done in like, you know, an hour or two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now my books are longer. That process takes longer. So now, um, so yeah, yeah, I would when it was when it was one a week I'd do it I'd write a book in a week I do have an editor and I've got a US based editor so she mm -hmm. can pick out any um you know when I yes. say garden instead of garden <laughs> yeah. you know you get these really cool mm -hmm. edit notes she's like we say jerk off not wang <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is good to know yeah yeah well we we, yeah, we <laughs> Ah, good. So, God bless um, the, the English language differences between the <laughs> between yeah. us and the colonies and the, yeah. <laughs> and the Americans. Uh, so, yeah, so now that I'm doing a book a fortnight, I I take a week, a literally yeah. week, to write a book, and and I do <laughs> tend to yeah. <laughs> so Monday is still my kind of my planning day and um to see, and then. Yeah four scenes and I don't really worry about word count on a given day I'm more, more interested in how many scenes I know how many scenes I need to write ah, so okay. four on a Tuesday four on a Wednesday right finish it up on a Thursday and then that gives and then Friday is a bit of a run over day if I need it and then I'll edit it the next day but yeah I find if I'm dictating the edit takes a lot longer mm -hmm. um so yeah that's that's the process really that's cool. And are you far quite far ahead or do you just are you running to the deadline? <laughs> says the says the running to the deadline person. <laughs> <laughs> um it it kind of varies. Um I get ahead, but then I take time off. So I take time off during this well, I say time time off. I don't write during the school holidays. Mm -hmm. Um and that means um you know, that's like two weeks every 10 weeks. And then over the last two years, over the Christmas break, because, you know, obviously in New Zealand, that's our big holiday. Um, I don't write for six weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and that just, you know, you need a break because yeah. it can be, um, you know, it can be quite taxing, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I tend to get ahead and then I get behind. But I, um, I'm always, I'm always, I try to always keep a few weeks ahead. Like I don't, like to put up pre-orders too early um until like I can really guarantee that I'm going to have that book done like usually the book's already you know started or it's yeah about to be started yeah yeah. Um, yeah that makes sense okay that's awesome I feel like we've asked all the questions we can possibly think of in terms of your strategies around writing and, and kind of publishing the books so I'd let's get like on to, to them about um oh. the series oh series yeah the series yep. like how many books in the series and also um you know, thinking up the new themes. You, I mean, you've given us a big list of um, the tropes and all that, but yeah, I just wondered how that works for you because, you know, you're so prolific. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, um, I've i always written in series and then, um, you know, a few years ago I discovered Shared Worlds and that was like, <laughs> like a mm. bit of an eye-opener. Like I was like, oh, yeah, that's um, what you do to interconnect everything, right? And um, so a series is great. And, and and also I got it quite wrong at the start. I was like writing a series like these are, this is a billionaire series, but they weren't connected in any way, uh, you know, and it took me a while to cotton onto that as well. Like, oh, right. So if you're going to write a firefighter series, they're all in the same firehouse, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then when I realized about shared worlds, I was like, I, I published this series um and I kind of backtracked and started connecting my next series to it. So it, was, it wasn't it was very planned out. And that's a world called Maple Springs. And, um, you know, I wrote kind of a bunch of 
series set in the shared world and, and Candy's Cafe was one series set around this cafe and then that became the setting that was always in just about every book someone would pop in there for a coffee or meet one of the people from there um so I tied it all in that way and um and then when I went dark I was like right I'm going to start a new shared world because now these are a bit darker so then I've got the Sunset Coast which is a shared world and those books you know I was like oh dark isn't isn't for me so this year was the first time or, or actually towards the end of last year where I sat down and like thought I'm going to plan this shared world <laughs> I'm like maybe that's how you meant to do it good idea, um, yeah. and I got this big piece of paper and I got my son's felt tip pens and I was drawing mountains because I also went back and looked like what had been my best selling books um what had my readers loved and what had I enjoyed and it was mountain men it was and it was and it was mil ex-military and um so I was like right that's that's what this is going to be and I came up with wild heart mountain and I you know drew it all out and I was like mountains and maybe there's like an MC there because I quite like writing those and my readers like those and maybe there's a lake and there's a lodge and that where I could bring some billionaires in mm -hmm. and then my son came home he's like oh what are you doing I'm like I'm, you know creating this world he's like can I help mama and he, he added like a racetrack <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to include this <laughs> but um anyway that was really fun planning that and and I wrote down I've got loads of ideas now mm. of just series I, I can be writing this for like the next two to two to three years yeah um and you know, and I just, I started with the, the ex-military mountain men and then I was going to do these other mountain men. And, and But what happened, I started publishing these and just suddenly everyone was publishing mountain men, just, you know, all at the same time. And I was like, oh, and, and that's what's what's great about short romance. I was like, okay, I'm going to do something. I'll do the MC, the mountain men, the ex-military mountain men MC. <laughs> So MC, oh, yeah. we're talking not for the MC for the wedding, but we're talking motorcycle, <laughs> motorcycle. club just to motorcycle just to clarify. Clarify. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I uh, yeah, I was able to pivot. I was like, okay, I'll do that series, that series next. Still in the same shared world, the characters are intertwined, nice. you know, they're all popping in to say hi and that. Um and you know, I'll come back to the other mountain men, that's fine. But 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 that's yeah, what I love about short romance. You can just quite yeah. suddenly change when you need and the to. other thing is just to clarify when you say shared world it's shared with the with your books and your characters not with other authors so this is basically mm. your version yes. of you know sadie king disneyland that she's created yeah. <laughs> and that the characters take part in yeah, yeah i love that yeah. love that yeah. I love the racetrack. I think you definitely need to do racing car drivers. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Could be rallying rally cars. I rally think car. if it's in a mountainous region, it might be hard to get the flat land. A disgraced Indy car. A disgraced <gasps> yeah. Indy car driver goes back there to the go. mountain home that he once knew to yes. rekindle the love of his. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, <laughs> oh, and um, actually, the other thing I wanted to say about series as well is. Um, it's I think it's important when you're looking at short romance is to when you're planning your series like you've got to really look at it as a whole um so I you asked me also about how many books now when I was writing short very short I was doing six book series and there was um the reason for that was I was thinking about the marketing of it and the box set yeah because when I was writing very short I was writing at the 99 cent price point and 99 cent with Amazon, and I was in KU, so with Amazon, you know, you only get the 30% royalty. But when you put these books in a box set and you can sell them for, you know, 2 dollars or more, then suddenly you've got the 70% royalty. So I was writing six books and I was very soon bringing out the box set so that I can then encourage people to go and buy that um, mm -hmm. that box set, you know, and get get more money for me. Um and I was giving it at a price point. So, um, you know, six books at 99 cents, that's well, almost $6. So then you uh, you want to kind of, us, you know, you want to give them a bit of a bargain. So I was pricing them at three ninety nine. so that even if they've read one book and then they see, oh, there's a box set, they still think, oh, well, I'm getting a bargain because this mm. will be cheaper than buying the other five individually. 
so that was quite a, that was a real strate strategic decision and mm -hmm. about how long my series should be now that I'm writing longer and I'm writing at the 299 price point mm -hmm. um that's not a consideration and I actually haven't done any box sets mm -hmm. <laughs> since I've been at 299 because mm -hmm. um from a you know um a money point of view that's you know now I actually want people to to mm -hmm. just read all the books um I I will do box sets because um I think it's nice and you know people like them so I will do them but there's not such an urgency to bring them out um and so I started writing in five book series because I thought well then I can do the same thing I can put them as 9.99 which is the most you can do mm -hmm. while still getting your 70 percent royalty um so so yeah there's a bit of a you know mm -hmm. a strategy behind that yeah and and when I um write in the series I'm planning when I plan my series like I tend to I plan it all, all out before I write the first book mm -hmm. so I look at um what tropes are in the series I look at the characters um and and I look at I now started looking that I'm writing you know a bit more emotional I look at the kind of like the emotional flow of the series mm -hmm. so um you know just for the for the series I'm writing I just did like quite a, a an emotionally um I don't know a tug on your heartstrings kind mm -hmm. of a book um and so the next one is a bit more comedic because again if someone's reading the series and they might read them all you know in a day even mm -hmm. some readers mm -hmm. or in a, in a week then that you know uh, that might be a bit too heavy for them yeah so that's the yeah. even flow of the whole series not it's just the, the, flow of the whole series yeah yeah and you cool. can have fun with your characters as well like I like um starting with a group of men that are bonded in some way so my military heroes they're all um you know they were all in the same unit and they've you know they just happen to now all be living on the same mountain <laughs> yeah <laughs> as you do yeah exactly. as you do um <laughs> So I had a scene in the first book where they're all they've they've come into this bar um that that that's quite integral to the to the setting and um you know for their their monthly meetup and you know that there's the one guy who pulls them all together and 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 you 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 kind of meet them a little bit and one of them you know calls and he can't make it because his nanny fell through and so you kind of know like oh there's going to be a single dad and nanny romance coming up yeah. <laughs> you know you can kind of tease yeah. a little. Yeah but yeah, right from yeah. that first book yeah. and I had something set up in there as well um a, a kind of an, a, an off-limits one that was a, a best friend's widow mm -hmm. um and that was the last book in the series and I quite like doing that making the last book kind of the forbidden love mm -hmm. because it can simmer throughout the whole of the other books oh, you know? yeah yeah oh, so then we have yeah, when the readers get to that last book, they're like, "Oh yes, we finally we get yeah. the one." Yeah, their story. Oh, We've all watched smart. those TV programs, haven't we? You know, where yeah. will they get together? Won't they? They shouldn't, but you know, yeah. and you keep, even though the other ones are resolved. I love that. Yeah. It's really cool. Really cool. Yeah, that's Did smart. I hadn't any... thought about that at all. Like that, that you'd have to think quite yeah. so strategically about the 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 type of story that you're telling in each in each book that's awesome yeah can I ask for your reader magnets did you do obviously I'm guessing you did it in the same world or similar tropes how do you so what were you using for your reader magnets like were you keeping a spare not quite as you know long story or just yeah if you could just talk about that um well, yeah, I just wrote an extra story because they're not that long anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, when you can sort of just do it in a week, that's, yeah. yeah. And I've had a few different reader magnets because I, I also found my writing has evolved so much. Mm. Um, you know, like it's it's been such a journey for me. And and because I think what, what held me back for so long, you know, over the years of my life when I really loved writing was this feeling that I wasn't good enough, mm. you know, um, and that how me, that, you know, that really, uh, you know, it's, I, you know, you st I still feel that, that imposter yeah. syndrome, you know, and, and that's what I found with short romance. I mean, not that, you know, you, you do need to have some craft <laughs> to be able to <laughs> string a sentence together, but it doesn't have to be 
polish you know mm. like I know my strengths and I know my readers they enjoy my characters and they enjoy my story so I, I'm I'm never going to win literary awards you know I know that um but uh, but my writing has improved mm. so much since my first books you know so I was updating my reader magnets basically about every six months to kind of fit in with the new shared world mm. um and also just because I, th I think I can give my readers better now. And I want that reader magnet to be my best work. You know, I want yeah. it to really reflect, um, you know, what I can do because because it's so important because mm. they're going to read that and then go, yes, it's worth, I've got this for free, but now it's worth buying these other books because mm. I really enjoyed that. Mm. Lovely. Yeah, so how many have awesome. you got sort of out there at the moment in the in the wild for your reader magnets? Like, are you working <laughs> with one or two? Or? Um, I've got three. At, oh, actually, I've got four at the moment um yeah and I've also just started doing bonus scenes as well mm -hmm. um because they're a great way to um well you know it's a different way it's a different kind of reader magnet yeah but also you know you can send that out a couple of weeks after your book's published say here's the bonus scene and if you read us if they've not read it yet they go oh I better give that a read so I can I can get that nice yeah yeah. So I've just started doing bonus scenes as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so silly why I didn't do them before. It's because I, I was um, scared of the technical aspect. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, trust me, everybody listening will relate to the yeah. imposter syndrome and also not doing something because, yeah, the tech yeah. can be scary, yeah. you know, mm. and, and overwhelming. More so in our heads than in the actual practicality, but we mm. all we all feel that. So no, mm. it's not. It's, it's true. It's, yeah, hundred mm. percent. Oh my gosh, so, that cracks me up. So <laughs> let's talk a little bit or quickly about what other. So you've given us some of the kind of marketing almost things that you do. Um, what other stuff do you have? A newsletter? Are you um, doing ads? What other marketing things? can you tell us about for particularly for the things that work best for um, short fiction? Yeah. So my newsletter is my number one marketing tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's um, yeah, it's, it's my best. It's just my best thing. Like I love it. Um, and I started collecting subscribers like right, right from the start. Um, and they came in organically, but I also did just book funnel builders to get my first, few thousand up there um and I, I do scrub them regularly I know some people do some people don't I choose to because I want to keep my open rate high keep my deliverability high um so I do them and and I, and I also have a very lengthy welcome sequence because I've got a hundred or so books yeah. Yeah. so that's you know that's a lot to <laughs> to talk someone through and yeah. so I take my time with that I have about five emails um, and I take them through the different shared worlds and I even take them through the dark I'm like hey you know this is something I tried you know do you like these um, and and then I give them also um, you know a reading list because I'm like you know this is just a taste mm -hmm. of it here's a reading list and um, and then I put them on my list and, and I have those emails say like five or six days apart so it's not it's not rushed through um, and I don't mind that because it means I've got a steady stream of people looking at my backlist, you know, mm. and I point them in those early books, I point them directly to the box sets, you know, this is this series and this is this series. Um, mm. And, you know, and then they come onto my main list and it doesn't matter that it takes them sort of five or six weeks to get to that stage, but you know, it doesn't matter because in my, my, my mailing list, I'm always in my emails, I'm always saying, you know, this is what's recently re released. You know, they're not they're not gonna miss much. Mm -hmm. So I'm email weekly because there's always there's always a lot going on, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when you're releasing so frequently. And yeah. um, you know, I always I find ways to put my backlist in my email. So I've started doing like um a trope of the month, like you know hey let's you know it was, it was when it was father's day I'm like all right this month we're looking at single dads and these are some books from the back catalog and did you know I did a whole series about single dads and oh look here's my new release that's about a single dad you know I I, I tie that that's in cool. all in yeah. yeah I like that tying it in like that and you've got enough books that you can actually mm -hmm. do those kinds of things that's awesome yeah 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 um the other marketing I do is I do I do paid newsletters 
um, on my releases. And there are some, there's some out there they've got that are very targeted to short romance. So Grow On With Heart, Insta Love uh, Book Club, um, Read Me Romance, you know, they they're all they were all set up by short romance writers. So their audience is very targeted. Mm. So they're my like go to. Um nice. Yeah. Um, but but also I should say as well, thinking when I think of the series, like I don't um I don't give every book the same kind of push. Um, you know, like be, because because I'm releasing so often, <laughs> um, mm. I will choose you know, a few books in the series that are getting the main book, main push. And and actually I often don't know what they are until I until I'm writing them. And then I'll get a feeling I'll be right writing this book and I'll be like, ah, this is my best work yet. You know, <laughs> <laughs> this is the book I'm gonna, my readers will love this. This is the one I'm gonna push. And 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 I'll do things. And um, you know, I do sometimes I do blog tours. Um Silver Dagger is is one that I like. Um I have started doing I, I do do advertising now so um that's when I when I was writing at the 99 cent price point I tried advertising on different formats and didn't really um find it to be to to really work for that price point but with the 299 um it, it, it it's it's been working for me um yeah that's been like my focus like this whole year, I just wanted to choose two things to focus on. And I said my email and advertising, um, everything else I'm not, I'm not going to worry about in terms of marketing. I mean, in terms of, well, you know, apart from the paid, news, paid newsletters I just mentioned. So yeah, I've, I've, I've really leveled up my newsletter. Like I, I just talked about, I did the, um, at the start of the year, I did the, um, Tammy's, um, you know, in the newsletter. Mm-hmm. Then, yeah. yeah. I did her advanced yep. Yep. So yeah, she's got this amazing advanced automations course. <clears throat> Excuse me. I did that for my newsletter. Um, and that's when I, you know, created that sequence. And I've actually just redone my opening sequence because also six months ago, I didn't have enough books at the $2.99 price point mm. to really be pushing. And yeah, and so I've just updated that because that's where I want to push everyone, everyone now. So anyway, I've been focusing on that. I've been focusing on advertising and I just started focusing on Amazon advertising and I'm like right you know I'm going to become an expert at this <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not I'm so far from an expert <laughs> but it's starting to work for me mm-hmm. um so that's and how did good. you learn how to do that what did you what tools did you use um so way back when I first started publishing and I was in the UK and I was um you know had this really awesome job in London that, well you know, that was bringing in really good money mm-hmm. <laughs> and I could, you know, spend money on all the things. Mm-hmm. I um did the, I, I got the Mark Dawson. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, advertising for authors course. Yeah. And I mean, that, and that is an awesome course and it is worth the money if you can afford it. Yeah. I'd highly recommend that. So, um, you know, I, I looked at a lot of that at the time. Didn't work out for me. So I've come back to that this yep. year. Yep. And then I've found some other books and things, um, that I've been looking at because I was finding it hard the just making sense of all the information you get mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah um but it's it is finally starting to make sense and I'm seeing that work which is really yeah. great mm-hmm. um so what I'm hoping in the third quarter uh, fourth quarter of this year to move on to Facebook because again when I tried that for the you know it didn't really work for me but mm. you know now I think I think I can probably get it to work to work yeah, yeah so those are those are the things that I'm I've choose, chosen to focus on. I don't do a lot of social media. I'm there. I'm there, but um, I'm not focused on that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, um, uh, you know, a couple of reasons. One, I, you know, my time is limited. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, because for me, I have a, I have quite, you know, a clear goal that, and it's not just an income goal. You know, it's to do with how many hours I want to work. Like, mm-hmm. um, I said, I want to be like you know uh, a multi six figure author working 30 hours a week you know um and i'm you know i'm not quite there yet with the money or the all the hours but 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 i keep both of those things in mind when i'm making nice. these decisions because i don't want to yeah. work all the hours nice. you know i want to i think that's really smart because yeah, it can be too. very easy to get sucked into 
either the belief or mm. or actually mm. doing you know the the mm. 40 60 whatever hours mm. you know a week and yeah life is and short, kind of thinking that's so. the only way to do it too mm-hmm. like absolutely and almost doing the work without even noticing that you are doing that many hours and just oh, kind of yep. so being conscious of that and having that as part of your goal is I think really really smart I like that yeah yeah I do too. yeah I really had to set those boundaries because um you know when it's your own business hmm. and, and it's something that you're so excited and passionate about you know you can just work all the hours mm-hmm. right um, and particularly because I mean, when, when we were in the UK, you know, I had a, I had another job. But when we came to New Zealand, you know, I just I said to my husband, I said, hey, I don't think I'm going to get a job. You know, I'm just going to write. <laughs> and, you know, I probably wasn't ready. Like a lot of people make that transition when they, mm-hmm. you know, they met their financial goals. And I wasn't there at all. But it, but just the, the timing was right. Because mm-hmm. it was also a chance for us to, you know, to reset how we wanted to live. Mm-hmm. And particularly having just gone through COVID, which had been a bit of a shock, we had this crazy life. We're both commuting into London. We're, you know, our, our baby was in, you know, childcare from some, when we were both in London, it was from seven in the morning to seven at night. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was just like, what the heck are we doing? You know, so that's why it's been such a part of every decision I make is really conscious, like, you know, I've only got one child he's the only child that we are going to have and I want to mm. be there I want to yeah you know I want to take part in all of that um you know because you know the <laughs> because stupidly I waited until my late 30s to have a child and to change career but I also you think that the, the wisdom of age and not mm. that you're old by any stretch because you know yeah but I think is is having a clearer understanding of definitions and of and of mm-hmm. of the price that things you, you can have all the things but not all at once kind of thing you know and I think yeah, yeah that's that's really smart. Mm, I like really. it. So when did you actually get back to New Zealand? How long have you been back in New Zealand? Uh, it was October um, twenty one. Ah, yeah. okay, Ooh, okay. Yeah. Just when Auckland was in lockdown. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Happy days. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. awesome timing oh, yeah. 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 yeah so I have a question you you mentioned and I can't remember if it was when we we're on air or before we started the interview that writing short fiction like this isn't for everyone and I just wanted you to kind of go and explain that a little bit more like who, who is it for and who should maybe avoid it <laughs> um I mean first of all you know if you want to do it give it a go honestly but um I think it's, you know, if you're bursting with ideas, you know, you've got a lot of ideas that, you know, you can just at the top of your head, you can, you know, think of, you know, a dozen series and different characters and all of that. Um, so I think, you know, you've got to have like, you know, a lot of ideas that you you just want to get out there. Um, and it's also you've got to, um, you know, it can be really relentless, the schedule. I mean, don't get me wrong, like obviously you have people have different reasons for coming to writing and if all you want to do is just, you know, enjoy writing a few books, obviously that's, you know, you know, one thing. But if you want to have a career and make money, then I think you do need to have quite a rapid release schedule. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily every week, not even every fortnight, but um, that certainly helps, particularly when you're starting out, if you want to build a following like that certainly help for me is mm. that fast release schedule yeah. um and that can be very grueling you know um and 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 and, and also I've found that writing short because there is a lot going on with family life and when I started my son was you know very young and I could only keep a short story in my head you know mm. <laughs> and to have something like written and done in one week that that really suited me and that kind of you know still suits me just to have it everything done quite quite quickly yeah. but the thing is you're then moving on to the next one and the next one so yeah and it's not just the writing of it it's the all the tasks that come around releasing you know it's the you know depending what you do yourself but you know the the formatting and getting the cover commission and booking your promos and getting it up on kdp and you know it's this there's a lot of work that's week after week 
And then as you do build that up, there's also your backlist. <laughs> there's mm. this huge backlist that you've got to contend with. So, you know, it, it can be quite busy. So I think it suits someone who, you know, who who can be quite focused, who um, doesn't mind that week after week schedule. Mm. Um, but yeah, but, but it, you know, I've seen authors that do get burnout you know it's it's a it's a it's a real thing I mean it's a thing for for any author for anybody and I think particularly when short romance um because mm -hmm. it can be that schedule can be quite relentless so I, I would say if you're starting out like pick a schedule you can you can stick with mm -hmm. um you know short once a week is great once a fortnight is is great as well but if you're not going to be able to sustain that then it doesn't matter every three weeks every four weeks as long as you're consistent with it it's got to, you've got to be able to sustain it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes that sense. Makes sense. So, how mm. do you actually just to quickly? I'm imagining you're a spreadsheet queen, Sadie. Um, <laughs> or how do you manage that massive backlist? Because just like keeping track of the links and the all the things. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I um, I do have a lot of spreadsheets. Um, and I, I have spreadsheets for like my connected worlds. They're, they're just very basic. And then I have, what I started doing recently is like a, um, a press kit for each, um, for each book, which is basically just a word document and it has the basic things. And I put the, all the links in there and then I pull out, um, when I'm doing my edit, I pull out quotes that I think, oh, I might want to use that for something. And then I go back. And I do look at my reviews and I pull out good reviews that I think I might want to use. Um, so so I keep that all together. That's smart. That's really smart. Sure. Boy, that's a time saver when you're and yeah. for when you're running ads, you know, particularly Facebook yeah. ads, I can imagine that would be, yeah, super helpful. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm. Are there is there anything else in terms of that that you have for um anyone listening, anyone thinking of getting into Insta Love or any advice that you would give someone that how to where to get started where to get going um yeah so you know I think you need to be really and clear clear from the start of um what it is you want mm. um and then you know what your goal is so so I know that's helped me like we talked about like knowing that it's not just about the money it's about you know I want the life balance I want to you know have less hours um so I think being very clear about what you want and then and then having a goal and then working on your strategies to get there so it's going to be very different so we you know there's a, we've got a very active group on Facebook um writing insta love mm -hmm. and you know someone there last week posted like oh I you know I, I've got a few books and I need to I, something's happened I need to just make money very quickly you know and it's like well okay so to, if you if your goal is to make money very quickly that's great it's a very different approach mm -hmm. to if you want to sort of build a business slowly so that in a couple of years you can leave your full-time job you know it's a very different approach so make money quickly I would get sort of six to 12 books and just release them very quickly every week um you know that's what I do but um yeah so but yeah just just know know what it is you want yeah and, yeah and and then take the advice and I, and I also think as well people focus too much on you know oh should I be doing TikTok should I be doing mm -hmm. ads um but actually there's other things you need to have in place first um you need to know like what your reader journey is you know um so they've you know they've read your book Re reading the book is only half of it you know, what are they going to do next? Like, have you got, you know, your, your pre-orders up for the other book? Have you got your reader magnet to collect your their email address? And once you've got your email address, are you taking care of them? How are you turning them, them into super fans? Like, you need to kind of get all that back-end stuff in place, you know, and then and, and, and even just getting them to read the book, like, you know, the cover, the blurb, the keywords, all those stuff, that stuff has to be on point. And then you can work at, worry about how to get your book seen. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of, you know, a mistake a lot of authors make is how do I get this book seen? It's actually easy. You know, you can do TikTok, you can do ads, you can do newsletter swaps. Like there's actually loads of ways to get your book seen. What's really hard 
is to get people to read that book yeah. <laughs> and then read the next book and the next book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say get all that stuff sorted, get all that in place yeah. first. That's yeah, and then there is a way to, to promote it. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, and also just awesome. for anybody that's not familiar with the publishing landscape, there is no such <laughs> such thing as fast money because even if you were to put six books up, you're not going to get paid <laughs> next week for those six <laughs> books from the uh, from yeah. the retailers. You know, yeah. there's a, at least a 60 day delay, mm-hmm. shall we say. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, true. That's awesome. Well, I think we have almost gone over time today because we've been um, so fascinated by listening to everything <laughs> oh you have to say. Um, but so thank you so much for joining us in the spa thank today, you. Sadie. It's been oh, fascinating. Um, so where is the best place for people to find you? Um, you can find me on my website, which is authorsadieking.com. Um, and I and I do want to say that I am actually writing a non-fiction book about how, how to write short romance nice. <laughs> um, Fantastic. yeah so that's hopefully coming out um probably next year actually early next year but let yeah you can find a little let bit about that comes out and we can let, let spread us know. the word we'll make sure we put spread the word and we'll make sure if you're listening to this podcast in the future and the book is out we'll make sure that the link is in the show notes as well mm. oh, yeah. perfect. so thank you so much for that that's been awesome um, and where can we be found, Sha? So we can be found for all our show notes and for the links and for the resources that Sadie actually mentioned in this interview. We're at spargirlspodcast.com and we are on YouTube at Spa Girls Podcast. If you are watching this, if you could give us a thumbs up and a, um, a subscribe, that would be super appreciated and that would stop me begging for um, more subscribers to our channel for vanity <laughs> numbers only. And we're at patreon.com at Spark Girls Podcast if you'd like to support the show. Thank you That's very awesome. much. So thank you all for listening to another episode of the Spa Girls Podcast. And thanks, Sadie, for coming along. Um, yes. We'll be back again next week. But for now, goodbye. Take care. Go Kiwis. Thank you.